you made such a lasting impact to me for the first time that I saw it that I actually thought that you were much more involved in this film, but I feel like your performance carries, it spans time, like he talks about, you know? And I love that about it, that you're just so memorable, and I feel like that's the kind of actor you are. You just leave like this indelible print in, in films and in people's minds. And um, I guess let's, let's talk about how you came to know Vincent and, and got attached to this project. Um, well, that's very flattering. I appreciate you saying that. In front of everybody. <laughs> um, uh, we had a mutual friend, Vincent and I, uh, an actress, and uh, 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 Bianca is her name. And she was in a, we were both visiting her in the hospital in 1993. And I, that's how I met him. He, he was already there when I, when I showed up. And he was in the middle of a story, and like, I just got, that, that was it. I, I just started listening. And he's a great storyteller. Just, he's like, you know, he's kind of like he is in this movie. <laughs> and just like, you know, just going along for the ride, you know? He's so you know, charismatic, and <laughs> compelling, and interesting. And um, three years later, like 1996, the Sundance Festival that year, ran into him. Uh, you know, as you do, you run into people. And he, he was like, hey, hey. He, he saw something I was in. And he was like, you're, you're a good actor, right? I like you, you're my favorite actor. <laughs> and and, uh, and he, again, he was just really funny and charming and and, and, I, and then I finally said, you know, we've met, we've met before. Um, at, at, the, at St. Vincent's Hospital, a couple of years ago, we were visiting Bianca. You know, Bianca, and he's like, that's you? <laughs> You're that guy? You're that guy? I can't believe that. I, I remember you, but I, you're totally different. You're totally different. You're that guy? Are you sure you're that guy? I remember you were wearing, he remembered what I was wearing. He was like, you had these parachute pants on. And I did, I had these like parachute pants from, from the 80s that I was still wearing in 1993. And he remembers stuff like that. But at that, at that point, he says, I have a script I, I want you to uh, uh, be in. I want you to play my brother. Uh, I think, you know, he, and then he was like, look, every, everyone who passed by, he was like, Dude, don't you think we could be brothers? And, 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 uh, and then, um, I was like, yeah, that'd be great. And so um, a year later, uh, after that, I got the script for this movie, and uh, there was no brother in it. <laughs> Like he, I, I know his character, but there was no there was goon. It doesn't say that it's Billy's brother. They have kind of a they're friends, but I was like, I hope he doesn't want me to play a goon. <laughs> Probably does. I can't play that part. I don't want to play that part. He didn't want me to play that part. And he wanted me to play that part. He said, he said I was the only person who could. <laughs> he said, you are the, you are a ghoul. <laughs> you are this guy. You're the only actor on earth who can play this part. Because you are. And I, I didn't think he meant that in a bad way. But I did say to him, I know I'm this guy. I don't want anyone else to know. <laughs> so I can't do it. And he um, was persistent. And, and, I, and, I, and I also was persistent. And I said, I, 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 can't, I can't, I can't. Like, I know, I know how to do this. I know how this part should be played, and I just don't have the nerve to, to play it. I just don't want to. Because he's also a good actor, 
I could, I could see how he was going to play Billy. And I just didn't want to be in the crosshairs of, of, of Billy's rage while I was being good. <laughs> and, um, and so I passed on the roll. And, uh, and then some it's not, not a whole lot of time went by. But um, I called him in a moment of distress and despair and drunkenness, asking if the part was still available. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, what happened, I had been uh, to the Independent Spirit Awards. In, in the interim, in between him, in between passing on the part in this movie and then asking Vincent if the part was still available. In, in that, between those two phone calls, I, 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 I was up for a, an award at the Independent Spirit Awards as a supporting actor. I was in a movie called Walking and Talking. So that's what I was there for. And, uh, the, the, the award went to Benicio del Toro for a movie called Basquiat. And uh, I didn't think I was going to be, you know, upset if I didn't get, if I didn't win. I was like, yeah, right, like I'm going to win. Like I'm going to win. If, uh, you know. And then afterward, I was really upset. <laughs> I was just, uh, I needed help. <laughs> I needed help getting back to my hotel from the beach. I, I was just like, it just kind of fucked me up. There was a lot of root causes for that breakdown. But when I got back to my room, I called Vincent Gallo <laughs> and asked him if, the, if, if Goon was still available. And uh, it wasn't. But he made it available to me. <laughs> He said, I'll, I'll, I'll make it work if you, if you really want it, if you're serious. And I said, yeah, I am. And, uh, and then uh, that was it. Then, then, uh, uh, then I went up to Buffalo. <laughs> and the fun began. <laughs> uh, and that's, uh, that's, that's how I met. Vincent. But you know what's funny is like he he said, so what's going on? What's what? Why are you in L.A.? I said I'm. I was at the Independent Spirit Awards, and I was up for an award, and I, I lost to Benicio del Toro. And he goes, what did he win for? What was he in? I said Basquiat. He goes, yeah, he he won he won an award for playing me. He played me in that movie, I said, I, which I didn't know. Uh, and I. I Vincent, he, he can tell like a, he's a, like I said, he's a very, he's a very excellent storyteller, and I, I, I um, uh, years later, like many years later, 16, 18 years later, I was hanging out with John Lurie, and, and we were watching television, and we, he was just flipping channels, John Lurie. <laughs> he's, he's lying on the couch. It was like hanging out with Marlon Brando. He was just kind of flipping the channels. He's, hey, you ever work with that guy? You know that guy? Flip the channels. How about that guy? He said, look, look, look at this movie. You ever see this movie? And then he came to. He finally came to something that was Benicio del Toro was in it. You ever work with that guy? He said, No, I. But I lost. The, I, I was up for, a, for the whole thing. Spirit Awards, and I, 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 he won, and, and, and John says, what did he win for? I said, he, he won for a movie called Basquiat, and John Lurie goes, he played me in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> and he, 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 he played me, and, I, and, I, and I, after I stopped laughing, <laughs> after I was finished, I said, Vincent Gallo told me the same thing in, in the same words like he just and and John said oh no he it, it's based on him too <laughs> the part was a, a kind of a, a, a 
a cross between me and Vincent. No, that's true. He, he, it is based on him because we. And then I, I, I ran that by Vincent, and he confirmed it also. It's funny. You would think that that there would be some that's bullshit or something, but there was nothing like that. They were they were they were uh, in agreement on that. Uh, and they both knew Basquiat pretty well. Like what Basquiat was John's roommate, and then he was in a band with Vincent. So it was like I've never even seen Basquiat. <laughs> Should watch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like this is such an amazing time shot of a of like a certain time in American cinematic history, and it's such an incredible cast, like with you and with Angelica Houston and Ben Gazzara and Mickey Rourke. I mean, it's like really amazing to to see it now and how it holds up. And I feel like this was kind of the blossoming of an American independent um, film scene that you were really a part of, and your career was coming up in these years as well. And so, what was it like for you as an actor to work with Vincent and 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 then like moving from that to where your career is now? Do you want to talk a little bit about that? I'm not sure. <laughs> if I want to talk. Uh, no, I, I I see what you're saying. I I like I didn't know any of those people were in the movie. Like I, I um, um, but like I, I, I kind of, I had, I knew that something was going on, going on in in uh, the movie business, uh, in the, you know early nineties or whatever. Like uh, um, something was happening. Uh, I, I was just kind of lucky to, to get in on uh, uh, a friend of mine named Jason Andrews was cast in a lead of a, of a, of a low budget movie called Rhythm Thief um, by a company called Film Crash, you know, like a, a and uh, I auditioned for a part in that and then I got the part and the movie went to, to the Sundance and it won, uh, Matthew Harrison was the director of that movie and he split the Best Director Award with, uh, I want to say, James Mangold for a movie called Heavy. So Heavy and Rhythm Thief shared the... Uh, uh, and uh, I, I don't know, it was, I was, it was like really just kind of the right place, right time. But, like, I, I went to the Lee Strasberg Theater Institute in the 80s, and there was a, a, an atmosphere of, of creativity and invention and kind of ambition and uh, 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 you know it was, it was at a time when like Al Pacino and Robert De Niro were still like you know it was like Monet and like the, like every time they came out with a movie it was like a cultural event and they didn't give a whole lot of interviews so there was still kind of a lot of mystery about about those about those guys, and you, you, you wanted to, to, to follow in their footsteps if you were, if you were an actor and uh, and, uh, and kind of explore the dark, the dark side of things. Or even if it's we're talking dark humor, but dark psychology and just sort of like uh, those are the interesting movies to be in, you know. Uh, and uh, I, I just tried to be. Uh, where that kind of stuff seemed to be happening, but uh, and I also I, I, I was uh, like I I was in a movie called Billy Bathgate, which was a more mainstream film. It was by Robert Benton, who made you know uh, Norma Ray and Places in the Heart and like mainstream movies. But Steve Buscemi was in it in Billy Bathgate, and. and uh, and I met him while while we were doing that. It was like 1990 or 91. And and he was a good guy to know. Uh, I, I ended up we ended up working together again a year or two later on, on a thing called Living in Oblivion. And uh, it, it was just like kind of a, a a vibe, you know, like I like like Steve. It's like you gotta be like that guy. You know, you gotta be like that. You gotta be like, you gotta be like Vincent Galli. You gotta be like Steve Buscemi. You gotta be like those guys. You know, uh, um, I don't know. I, 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 I was uh, just uh, um, I 
<laughs> nothing. See, that's the thing. You just kind of wait for that to come. You, know, you just sort of wait for that. You wait for the world to come to you. It's like if you, if, if, the, if you know, some musicians have that kind of approach. You know, people. Uh, uh, I remember the, the, the guitar player from My Bloody Valentine described his the music as being like you have to sort of come to it. It's very internal and stuff like that. And just kind of. Uh, I, 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 I relate to that kind of, you know, that pause. You know, Christopher Walken will pause and the world will come to him. <laughs> you know, it's like a cat and mouse type of thing. Uh, it's just, you know, sense of humor and timing and, or I don't know, I, I, I it, it just seemed to work. Like, I, I, I think that the biggest break I, I've ever had was um, auditioning for Martin Scorsese in uh, 89 for the good, what turned out to be Goodfellas. Uh, and I, I just I did, did what I'm doing right now, you know? Um, and, and just hoped <laughs> that he would notice what I was, uh, <laughs> like what I was doing. Like I was, in, I was into the scene. I was in my, sh I was in my shit. <laughs> I was like serious, serious about what I was doing. And he noticed, you know, it's like, it's good, it's good, it's good. It's good. Uh, it's like, I got the job. Uh, I feel like that's what comes so through in, in your films, though. I mean, you are so authentically you in each and every role. And there's like, I don't, this beauty of watching you, Kevin, really, and I know, like, I was talking about it with Amy Talbot, and she thinks you're one of the greatest actors ever. I agree with this. I feel like you bring a life and a vibrancy and a joy, and it's really incredible to watch. And so I'm wondering what your creative process is and, and how you, you channel roles or, or what you do to prepare, and kind of, like, also, like, what led you to wanting to do this? Um... I, well, again, thanks. I, I thanks for saying that. I, I, I. Um, you know, I, I guess Vincent was right. You know, I, I, like about me being this character. But I, I. It's funny because he said, "You will be remembered for this role more than any other role that you ever do." <laughs> I don't want to be remembered. <laughs> uh, but I didn't know. Like I, 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 I was so confused. Like I knew he was an artist. I knew he was making, like, like with him, if if he's making a movie, it's not just a movie. It's like a painting, and you're gonna be in the painting. So don't worry about how you're portrayed in the in the movie. If you're if he tells you to take your clothes off or whatever, just do it because it's it'll be like being in a you know a, a Lucian Freud painting or something. You know, just just let it all hang out. It's this is like the place where it's okay to do that. You know, because it's it's uh, you know it'll be his aesthetic and it'll be beautiful and it'll be, it'll be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> you're in the right place, you know? You're where you're supposed to be. Uh, you're doing exactly what you want, you, what you say you want to do. This is it. This is that. This is this. Is this. this is this. This isn't something else. This is this. Um, this is that, you know, this, this is the fucking deer hunter. You know, what else do you want? <laughs> But it was it was it was like um, um, uh, I, other than that, you know, like I, I I was glued to the television since I was four years old, you know, um, and I watched a lot of a lot of uh, like sitcom TV and a lot of uh, uh, I, I remember there was a show that I really loved. It's funny, it didn't even last an entire season, as I found out years later on, you know, looking on the internet. Hey, let me look up that show with uh, Jerry Stiller as the father, and he's got two sons. It was called Joe and Sons. It's just about like a, a, a widower with two sons, and, and one of the sons, 
I, I just couldn't take my eyes off him. You know, he, he was like that guy. I just thought, I just found him so interesting. And it was the actor Barry Miller, who was the, the, the guy who jumps off the Verrazano Bridge in Saturday Night Fever. And then he was in Biloxi Blues. I think he, he, did, he was in the play Biloxi Blues. He won a Tony Award. This is a great, this is great, great actor. One of my favorites. But even from back then, before I, I even knew what acting was, there was just something about him having a very matter-of-fact presence in, in this TV show. And I was like, I want to be that guy. I want to do what he does. You know, it, it was just kind of like that. I want to do what they do. Like, you watching The Deer Hunter. I saw that on Channel 9 when I was, like, 10 years old. They, for some reason, they left. It, it was They showed it on, on a local television station, WOR, Channel 9, unedited. So it's like they're, all the cursing was in it. I, I was like... That, that seemed like a lot of fun, you know? Um, and uh, it's a little bit like like the movie Broadcast News, too, that part where, uh, where uh, Albert Brooks is coaching William Hurt while William Hurt is doing a live broadcast. And they, they, they need some piece of script, for something for him to say. Uh, Albert Brooks... Well, he doesn't text them the line. He, he writes it and says it to someone, Holly Hunter, over the phone, and then they get it to him. And, he said, and then uh, and Albert Brooks is watching the, the broadcast, and he's, he's like, I say it here, it comes out there. It's a little bit like that. It's like, how do I get from here to there? Uh, it's, you know, wanting to be on, on, on television. You know, it's like wanting to be on stage. It's like wanting to be up here with a microphone. Give me the microphone. Ask me a question. Pay attention to me. Um, I, I, uh, um, uh, but I, I also, you know, I, 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 uh, I was, uh, my mother was an artist, you know, she painted and I, I, I was, kind of following in her footsteps, you know, painting and drawing, until acting came along, which was more Im immediately gratifying. Uh, and I, I pursued that. But I, and I also pursued writing for a, a, a while. I wrote a couple of plays that were, you know, I, I kind of felt that I had, uh, you know, uh, a degree of, you know, ability with with, you know, uh, music, you know, eventually I, I got a guitar and I started doing that. And, uh, 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 so, uh, um, it almost feels like you just had to channel creativity in whatever way that it was coming in for you. Yeah, you know, some people have something to s actually to say. Uh, that's always been kind of a, a problem for me. It's like, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> Or if I do, I think it comes out vicariously through the the, the, the people that I work with, and uh, and it's no uh, coincidence that um, a lot of the people that I worked with in the '90s were, were hyphenates, you know, or tours, people who wrote and directed, I, I Vincent and um, so many others. Al Hartley, uh, because I wanted to, that's, that's what I really wanted to, to do. So I want to do what they're doing. And I, I can't, you know, I don't know how to make a, I don't know how to put a movie together. So in the meantime, I'll just, I can act in, in movies if I can get the jobs, you know. And, uh, and those, those, these are the movies that I've ended up in. Uh, so I started working on with Hal Hartley. I had two weeks off. I had like two days of work on, on Buffalo 66. Two or three days. And, and there was two weeks in between those days. In that time, I, I started working on uh, with Hal Hartley on a movie called Henry Fool. And he wanted to cut my hair. And I let him do it. And uh, when I got back to Buffalo, um, 
Vincent was remarkably uh, uh, forgiving about it. Um, I, I started to tell him the truth about why I cut my hair, and he says, don't tell me that you did that for another director. <laughs> if you tell me, just tell me you did it for a girl. <laughs> if you tell me you did it for a girl, then I will understand. <laughs> Don't tell me you did it for a girl. <laughs> I said, I, as a girl, I was going to cut my hair. Because I, I understand. <laughs> I just gave you a hat. And we were going to do the scene where I visited him in jail, and that's why Agoon is wearing a hat when he visits him in jail. Um, but I, it was, I, you know, I was like on a roll that year, you know, going from, you know, some Buffalo 66 to Henry Fool, and then uh, uh, Tamara Jenkins was in that kind of, that mix. I did a short film with her called Family Remains, and that kind of set the, you know, uh, set me on the path toward working on slums of Beverly Hills, and, uh, and then there was like a, a lesser known film, uh, uh, didn't do as well as all those movies called Ill Town with Nick Gomez, and Dick Nick was the Laws of Gravity, he was Hal's editor on the movie Trust, and, um, and then I, I worked with, with uh, Steve uh, Buscemi on, on uh, movie he directed called Lonesome Jim, and so I was kind of in there, you know, just, just like, uh, you know, fortunately, you know, I found like a niche, a niche, with, you know, I found like, uh, and, uh, and it, it was just like, you know, to, to me it was all an extension, and, 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 and uh, it would all kind of float out of my experience at the Lee Strasberg Theater Institute, which is still in business. Uh, sort of black box theater uh, kind of thing. You know, just like us sitting here. If we had scripts, we could do a reading. We could just, you know, just start start doing it. Just start, just start building it from there. Uh, that's 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 what it's about for me. It's just taking it from you know the the, the table read to uh, uh, I mean you know I, I don't I know a lot less about like, structuring a whole a whole movie production than other people, but like um, you know I can I, I I can be around to like keep the vibe going, <laughs> you know, be the be there to to hang out. And, exchange ideas and talk about music and, you know, like, um, uh, and, and, and to, you know, just try to keep the, keep the environment kind of rich in, 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 uh, in, 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 in the right, you know, uh, cultural references, uh, uh, or just, you know, it's like, uh, it's like, this is going to be like, uh, this is gonna be like working on a like this is gonna be like like a, a Velvet Underground tour. This is gonna be like a, a I don't know. It's, it's gonna be a cool place to be. Sometimes it isn't, you know. Sometimes it falls short of, of all those ideals. And then wherever it f ends up is where it's supposed to end up, you know. And it's like. You know, shit, I had all these corny ideas about what it was supposed to be, and it ended up being something else that was better. So I don't know, you know. Uh, you know, you just look at it. Um, like, I, I was, we were talking earlier, I, I didn't know how this movie was going to turn out. Um, and I, 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 I probably, I don't, I don't know if I, I, I may not have been that interested in seeing it if it hadn't started to get like good reviews but um, I, I, I you know, eventually I did start hearing things about it and uh, so, so that was a good idea it was a good idea to work on that movie wasn't it 
the original idea to work with Vincent Gallo was, was the right idea. You had the right idea, you know, it was like he's, he's a sort of outsider. So you want to be, you want to, you want to run, you want to be with those, those kinds of artists, right? Doing something different, something outside of the box. Um, just, you know, if you're doing, um, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. I think our lives take us exactly where we're meant to be, always. And we're learning and evolving and growing through all the things. Um, and I love that. But that's like kind of part of the journey for you, like through acting and music and art and all the different things that you partake in. Yeah. I, I you know, uh, I, 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 as, as, as long as it's, you know, it's, it's, it's continued to work, Time. A lot of people sort of, uh, you know, that I started out with have just ended up leaving the business. There are a lot of reasons to leave the business, too, you know. Um, um, but I, I, uh, um, uh, you know, I, 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 I like it. I, I like, I like, uh, uh, there, there are just too many actors I still want to meet, you know. And that's another thing too is like you know the the, the reason to be an actor is to is to, is to put yourself in a in a place where you can meet actors, you know. I thought I really would like to meet Al Pacino, so I'll be, I'll be an actor and eventually find myself, you know, in a situation with him or with whoever else, you know. Uh, I want to meet. Why is it important to, 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 to meet these people? Um, uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it, 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 it might, it might have, you know, they, they, maybe they want to meet me. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I, I had like a, uh, um, I, I met Pete Townsend. Uh, this this is like you know uh, 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 kind of a you know just like a um, a really nice thing that was sort of like came out of you know the acting. It's like a, 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 in 2015 I had a movie. It was in an Andrew Bujalski movie, right? It was called uh, Results. So I was doing a press tour for that movie. I met a guy who was a freelance writer and, and he did a story. The story never came out, but we stayed friends. <laughs> and we, we talked a lot about music and he was friends with like uh, uh, Townsend's publicist. He says, you want to see The Who? I said, yeah, I'd like to see The Who. The Two, whatever, yeah. Because well, they were playing in Chicago uh, 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 March 10th. If you can get yourself here, I can get us like some uh, uh, some tickets and probably some passes to the to the to the to the PR lounge. And I said I'll I'll, I'll, I'll get a I'll get a cheap ticket up. Uh, yeah, when is that March? Whatever it was. It was actually on my wedding anniversary. I didn't tell my wife about it until like like a week before I was supposed to go. Uh, and she said, "You oh you have to go." Huh? Aww. Yeah, she was. She, she understood, and I went, and uh, uh, and we, uh, and and my friend uh, Steve, he said, uh, if you, uh, you know, if you write to Pete and tell him you're you're, you're coming to see the show, it'll it'll increase the chances of, of an actual meeting. So he said, I'll write to Pete. I don't have his email address. And he goes, I'll give it to you. Just write to him and, and send him, like, tell him you were in a movie with uh, uh, the guy from uh, 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 Sexy Beast, Ray Winstone. Tell him you were in a movie with Ray Winstone. I'm sure it was. I was in a, uh, The Departed with Ray Winstone. It's because he was in Quadrophenia. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I, I wrote to Pete Townsend. And I said, I, I'm coming to see The Who. Uh, and um, 
my friend Steve, he knows your publicist, they might be going to be in a PR lounge after it, and whatever, I, I, I've been an admirer of yours, and just British Invasion rock in general, and I um, just think you're great, and uh, uh, here's a picture of you with Ray Winstone in the department, and Scorsese, and da da da. And I, like I, at that point, I hadn't even like I, I probably could have told them like, hey, I was in Goodfellas. I was in Goodfellas. They played uh, Magic Bus. With, like when I'm on the screen, that's like it's right when Ray Liotta slams the brakes on the car. He's coming to pick me up at the hospital. You can still hear Keith Moon's fucking drums as they cut to me. I didn't say any of that. But, uh, he he replied to me. Like, within 45 minutes. I was like, Jesus Christ, that's less than an hour. Even this is the, if, if it's him, if it's really him. <laughs> and he says, I, you know, I'm a little, you know, I'm, I, I'm not, I don't really have the energy that I used to. I, I probably won't be able to come and meet you after the show, but I'm a fan of your work. And he, he mentioned this TV show called The Mentalist. He watches The Mentalist when he's on tour. I was in The Mentalist, and he, he knew I was in it, and he said that, um, you know, uh, uh, that, he, he, that, he, that he, he knew me from that. And, uh, and then uh, the next day he wrote and said, I've heard from my publicist that there aren't going to be that many people at the meet and greet, so I may come by. And he's like, if you, if you want to, if you, if you feel like it, uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, whatever. Um, I can't remember exactly where, but we went and uh, saw the concert. Even if I, the concert was great, it really was. And then afterward, we were in the in the, the lounge, and and, and there, there's a lot of there were more people. We were, we were there before the show too, hanging out in there. It was like a locker room for the hockey players, you know. It was just an unremarkable area, and and then there were more people there after the show, and some of the people that were able to get in before the show couldn't get in after the show, and I just kind of slipped right in there. And, and was hanging out, and it was just like a lot of, it was like a lot of people, it wasn't like, you know, like a cool crowd, like this. <laughs> it was like a, it's just like a suburban crowd, right? like, you know, just, who are these people? <laughs> uh, they, I mean, they weren't artists, they weren't, it's weird. Uh, these are who fans, these are rock fans? <laughs> maybe, maybe they were, maybe they were, like 30 years ago, but, <laughs> But I was just like, <clears throat> and then he walks in. He walks in. The, he walks in, and he starts talking to all those people. He starts working that that crowd. Uh, I I just went into the uh, there was another room. I, I went in there like I like I, I, like I can't believe this is this is how, this is kind of going down. Me and Pete Towns, and um, um, and he he kind of finished. Working with that, and the guy Steve was like, Kev, Kev, he's gonna, he's gonna leave. He's done, he's done talking. All these little things. And I was like, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. And when he saw me, he, his his whole demeanor kind of was like, you know, he just went from being like, uh, he smiled, at, 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 and 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 we were in this door frame, just kind of like, <laughs> um, and you know, just going like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. I, I thank you. Thanks, thanks for coming. Thanks, thank you for being you. <laughs> um, he goes, where do you live in LA? I was like, no, I live in New York. He goes, oh yeah, we get, we get, we go through there. We get through there pretty often. I'm like, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> played a, uh, played at Joe's Pub. You and Lou Reed did a set. Yeah. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, that's great. Uh, um, uh, and then we took a picture. Like I didn't know. I, I, I couldn't really. I, we didn't have like a deep conversation or anything. But it was like uh, it, it was. It was weird to look in in that man's eyes. And 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 have him. Like he knows who I am. Uh, and uh, and 
I, 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 I don't know what that means. I don't know if it means anything. But it's, I like it. I like, I like that this is happening. Because, like, um, like with Scorsese, it was like this, like this, is like meeting Marty. This is like he gets me. Like I felt like Marty gets me. Uh, we were working on like Goodfellas, and we would talk about music, and uh, that was the the magic, you know, subject to to bring up. And we would just be talking until the first AD had to come over and break it up. Because the this, this, this scene was ready to, to, to go. But we would be talking about, like, like, like I wanted to, to, like, I've been turned turned on to so much music by Scorsese's films, like Cream, and, uh, 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 like, you know, from an early, I was 14 when I saw Mean Streets, I'd never heard, like, you know, uh, uh, Stepping Out at the, at the end of the movie, and, you know, I, I that just opened me up. Like kind of music at the end of the day is that that's what I get off on more than movies or, or you know uh, literature or anything. It's music, and uh, and, um, and and I, I the, the, the two times that I've worked with Marty Scorsese, I've had that moment with him where where it's like we've talked about music. We've kind of gone head to head. You know, like I I I, I would say hey hey hey. hey uh, 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 there's a movie, there's a movie, I think it's a, it's a black and white movie, an Indian film. So, there's a... Panther? A, 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 well, he, yeah, it was a pan, a Panther Pachali, uh, where there's a, a, a bag, bagpipe group on a beach. And I, I think it might, it might have been a World of Apu. Well, well, I think that's the same movie, right? Yeah. Panther Pachali is World of Apu. So he, he knew what it was. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, um, I was like, what, what, what I, what I, what I, what I want to, what I want to run by, what I want your take on is, I mean, what is that? Why it's, they're wearing like kilts? It's like they're, they're India. They're Indians. They're playing like a, they're playing bagpipes. He goes, ah, no, no, it's like, you know, the British Empire. You know, they were still in Britain, India. You know, like, uh, like right, yeah, the, 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 the Celtic thing. He goes, yeah, you know, the, the, at some point. In every culture, you know, there's been that kind of drone, you know, that kind of drone. I'm like, yeah, 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 that's what I'm talking about, that, that kind of like uh, the sitar and the bagpipe and that kind of hum and that drone. And he goes, yeah, yeah, in every, every, every culture, you know, at some point, uh, you know, they, they, uh, someone uh, leaves a, a, a goat's stomach lining out in the sun for a month and, it, <laughs> and they come back a month later and they, they, they hit it and it makes a whoop, whoop, it's kind of sound and they go, oh wow, wow, well, that's, some, that's what he said to me, he's like, that's, that's, that, that kind of comes to pass inevitably in every culture. And, 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 and it was like, I love that. <laughs> I love that, that's just what I, that's the information I want. <laughs> that makes me feel like, you know, it's, it's like picking up the pencil and going like this. Uh, I remember sitting next to my daughter when she was little, and we were just kind of like co coloring, and she just turned to me and goes, I like the sound it makes. <laughs> I was like, it's not a lie. It is, it's the sound of the, you know, um, you know, of, 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 the, of, the, of the, the, the water, you know, the sound of like, a, they're all kind of, you know, that turns into a movie at some point, or it turns into a painting, or it turns into a story that gets told, or, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, that's how I kind of look at it all. Yeah, I love that. Sound is the origin of everything. There's a book you should read. It's called The Mysticism of Sound and Music. Oh. It's so amazing. It's all about like how sound and, and the universe kind of like sparked everything, and, and that's like where the creative drive comes from. And I think you dig it. It's yeah, I, I I dig it. I dig it. I I, I heard. Um, I was listening to uh, Alan Alan Watts' uh, speech. He says he addresses the question of whether uh, um, if a tree falls in the forest, does uh, no one's there to hear it? Does it make a sound? He says no. It does not. Because in order for something to make 
uh, in order for sound to exist, you know, uh, there has to be the relationship between that vibration and a corresponding uh, auditory system. Meaning, someone with who, who can actually hear stuff needs to be there to to complete the the illusion of sound, more or less. Or um, otherwise, it's it's. I mean, that's what you know, you know, that's. Uh, uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm a very willing, uh, uh, I'm a sucker for a laugh, I'm a good audience, I love the artists that I love, and I feel like they exist, at least, you know, partially, because I'm listening, uh, and I'm watching, and I'm ready to, to, to be their audience whenever they make something. And that's like I remember. I remember Ted Hope kind of articulating this uh, about it's not just the movies that need to be made. It's more. It's like you have to. It's it's up to the artist not only to build the movie, but to build the audience. I'd never thought about uh, thought of it that way before, but it's true. I love that. I feel like that's the magic, and I think that's why that's, we're all so moved by art and, and being right. together and being able to watch things in, in theaters together. Yeah, which yeah. is where you come in, and the, the wonderful work that you do in this place is is exactly, you know, the fulfillment of that uh, that uh, virtue, uh, whatever. It's it's like we're we're here now. Because you program this, and, and the, you know the movie has an audience because you put this evening together. If, if without that, the movie doesn't really exist. Um, so I and I, I thank you for, for 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 having me here and allowing me to exist. In, I love you existing. In, in this uh, <laughs> in this window of time. So good. Um, uh, I'd love to open it up to some audience questions. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about your decision not to be in the credits for the movie, especially like over the span of time? And also, I have to ask one more too. In uh, some of Beverly Hills, you wear this T-shirt that has uh, Charles Manson on it, repeated, <laughs> to repeated times. And I was wondering how you feel about his music. About Manson's music. <laughs> <laughs> Um, some of it's all right. <laughs> um, I, I, he, 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 he's got that. Uh, it's yeah. He was he wasn't so bad <laughs> as a musician. <laughs> Especially when you when you hear like all. Look at the, your game girl is so good. Huh? That song. Look at your game girl. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's great. They, they should have just signed him. <laughs> <laughs> Save I mean, Could have saved a lot of lives. Yeah, yeah. man, he wasn't that bad. <laughs> but I, I don't think they they didn't sign him because he was like a. You know, a anyway. Uh, <laughs> It's funny, I've always thought Vincent Gallo's music sounds a little bit like Charles Manson's. <laughs> in a good way. I like Vincent Gallo's music, it's really wonderful. I don't know if you guys played music together on, on the set, ever. No, we, we, we talked about, you know, his guitars and vintage equipment and stuff like that. Uh, actually, he, he was going to make a Manson movie uh, at one point. Uh, and he wanted me to be in it. He wanted me to play Tex Watson with him as Manson. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I ran into him at the 101 Diner in LA. And that's when he, he told me about this idea that he had for Manson. Um, I, I, I don't think he ever made it. I, I know he's got a, a couple, a, a, a few yeah. unreleased films, but I don't think that was one of them. But. Um, the yeah the uh, uh, what's the other question? I'm uncredited in this film. That's a long story. I, I, I don't want to waste time with that story. It's not that interesting, and, and it's it's on the internet. You can find like you know, it's in the Onion or something. <laughs> <laughs>
15 years ago, I, I, I told the whole story. <laughs> and it was like, uh, I, I, I think it kind of works. It's, it's kind of like the, you know, the, like it's, it, it works cons conceptually. Because, you know, like I, I told him, I don't really want to be remembered for this role. I just want to kind of keep a, a distance between myself and, and this work. And, um, but at the same time, it, you know, telling him I don't want the rest of the world to know that I'm this guy. Uh, and so not having a credit in the movie, you know, people ask, it's, it's, it's like the White Album, you know? It's just, there's nothing on the cover. Um, it's like you're in this movie and you're not credited. Uh, it's like, yeah. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, is it, I'm in it. Or am I? <laughs> we have time for two more questions. Yes. Um, I, I think you're a better storyteller than my question might be, so I'll let you run with it. But uh, maybe just a compliment is I always enjoy your... Uh, Irish American roles, and um, I know I've read on Wikipedia you grew up in the Bronx. Like my dad's Irish from the Bronx. I don't know. I'm just curious about your take on uh, Irish. Per portraying Irish Americans, or or just the New York. One. I don't. I don't know. I'll let you. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, I. Uh, um, you know, like Mean Streets, the movie Mean Streets. Uh, there's a scene where where these long-haired kids are trying to buy fireworks <laughs> in Little Italy, and uh, they end up taking these kids for a ride, and uh, they say, All right, we're gonna, we're gonna drop you off on this corner, we'll come back with the fireworks. Uh, and uh, they're like, okay, and they're about to get to the corner, hey, wait, wait, where's the cash? And they're like, you take checks. There's checks? Where are you guys from? And the kids say to him, Riverdale. <laughs> well, maybe that's what they do up in Riverdale. <laughs> Down here we gotta take cash. And um, I was like, Riverdale? <laughs> <laughs> um, my friends and I used to, to, to uh, crash the, the, the private pools in Riverdale. <laughs> We lived on like Marshalloo, Bainbridge, but we would make our way over to, to like Riverdale some summer nights, climb over the fence of the private buildings and go swimming in the pools there in Riverdale. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, uh, well, you know, the whole tradition of, uh, you know, the Irish actors and writers, and, you know, the whole drinking thing, alcoholism, <laughs> poetry, you know, all, all of that stuff kind of intersects and kind of gets into, you know, uh, a person's kind of uh, sort of general, uh, you know, uh, array of intentions and uh, motivations. And, uh, yeah, I kind of want it to be like, you know, Peter O'Toole, and, you know, uh, 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 drinking and acting are kind of go together, and, 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 you know, just street theater in general. I know a lot of guys, a lot of people in the Bronx who, who were better actors than I, than I will ever be, you know, who, who just walked the, 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 the you know, the stage of the, the streets of the Bronx in, in ways that, like, uh, I, I could just, you know, I, I didn't have that kind of courage, uh, or that kind of, like, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if that answers your question, but I, I, there, there is some kind of relevance, and there is a connection between, like, the, the street theater of, of the Bronx and, and the, the sort of the, theater of uh, uh, Strasbourg Institute and, you know, stuff that I went on to do, it was like a direct line from one thing to the other, certainly, 
That should be the last question. I'm, I'm kind of running out of uh, things to say. I'm running out of... Uh, anyway. We can end there. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. Thank you.